What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got a box from Tiny Chip Hub and I'm very excited about it. You know, I'm excited about every single box that shows up here, but the contents of this box has the potential to sort of reshape perception a little bit in the home mining world. And so I am very excited to open this thing up and check it out. So we'll do what we always do. I'll get the fancy knife out. I will open this thing up. We'll see what's inside and then we'll pull it out and play around with it. That doesn't sound good. We'll carefully remove the contents of this box and then we will thoroughly test it for research purposes. That sounds a little bit better. So anyway, let's do it. Okay, so we got the fancy knife. Check. Let's open this thing up. Okay, you people ready for this? I know, who you calling you people? Nobody, just everybody, I guess. I don't know, here we go, ready? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, what do we have here? What, oh, that's a stand, okay, looks cool. What is this? Oh my God. This is a NerdQX++, but it's not just any NerdQX++. This is Tiny Chip Hub's remastered NerdQX++. It has foam all over the fan blades, but let's not worry about that. And they say that it is the best NerdQX++ in the entire world. So check this thing out. You know, I've always been a huge fan of the NerdQX++. I even have a few right here. But I've always said tiny chip devices are kind of like the Ferrari of home miners, or desktop miners anyway. And it's particularly fitting in this case because the board is even Ferrari red, which I absolutely love. Now it's got a little stand where you can put a Bitcoin medallion in the back. It's got a fan on the back. This looks like an 80 millimeter. And uh, it's got some other really cool features that make this thing very exciting. So you've got some heat sinks, which are great. It also uses the highest grade of Panasonic capacitors that you can possibly source and brand new ASIC chips. Every single other Nerd QX on the market uses refurbished chips because it's a very costly, difficult process to go and buy brand new Bitmain ant miners and harvest brand new chips from those devices to make things like this. But that's exactly what Tiny Chip Hub does. And so this is my only Nerd QX++ with brand new, fresh Bitmain chips. And that in and of itself is very, very exciting. Now, I don't tend to leave these fans on here. In fact, I have a whole bunch of them. If you go look over here, just on the wall for decorations. So we'll pull this thing off and stick one of these things on because this is actually something that I make here in the Carpoos Mining Lab. This is the Mod 1 adapter and knock to a 120 millimeter fan. But just check this thing out. It looks beautiful. I don't do stock anything around here. So this is a Carpoos Mining modified, tiny chip hub modified Nerd QX++. Just look at this thing. This thing is, dare I say, sexy. I mean, just look at it. I cannot wait to plug this thing in and get it online. I am just blown away. This is a sweet looking piece of hardware. This is what we call the magic moment. Let's plug this thing in and see if it works. Here we go. Oh, she is coming to life, baby. Oh, yes. She's alive and she looks good. Check this thing out. Oh my God, the fan got me. Happens sometimes. I get too excited when I'm making these videos. Anyway. Let's get this thing connected and we will do some tests. Okay, so we're all connected and we are mining away. Now I'm not gonna do a complete setup guide because I've made several videos about this in the past. I've made a whole bunch of videos on the NerdQX++ and I've walked through the entire setup, but it's very easy. Basically, once you plug this thing in, you just get on your phone here and, uh, oh, check that out. Is that a NerdQX display right on my screen? It sure is, thanks to the HashWatcher app. More about that below in the description. It's great, it's for NerdQX++, yada, yada, yada. But let's not get too sidetracked. So you get on your phone, you go to your settings, and you look for the device in your Wi-Fi networks. And it's gonna be called like Nerd something. Click on that. Once you click on it, all you need to do is input your Wi-Fi settings. So the network name and password. Then you save and you press restart. Once you do that, there's an IP address on the top of the LCD screen on your device or here on your phone if you have Hatchwatcher. Uh, and then basically you just input all your pool settings and you are good to go. Easy peasy, good stuff. So here's what we got going on. The Tiny Chip Hub NerdQX++ is currently plugged in. It's mining away. We're getting 6.4 terahashes per second. But here's what's impressive. The efficiency right now is 14.6 watts per terahash, which is better than any NerdQX++ that I have. So maybe that's because of the incredible Panasonic capacitors. Maybe that's because of the fresh new chips. I don't really know, but the efficiency is amazing there. Now the temps are very low. The ASIC temp is 51 degrees, 
40 degrees as far as the VR temps go. If it gets much lower, icicles are going to be hanging off of this thing. Now, I did install the Mod 1 adapter and the larger fan. I do that with all of my stuff, but I needed to do that in order to benchmark this thing's abilities, its performance, because if I take a kind of a stock tiny chip hub version and I compare it to all of my other Nerd QX Plus Plus devices, which are modified, it's tough to determine if this thing is really all that great or not. And so it's more of an apples to apples comparison if I outfit it exactly like my other devices so I can see how it performs. But I'm really impressed with this thing. This is a very mild overclock. We have our frequency set to 750. We have our ASIC core voltage set to 1200. And so that's pretty low and we're getting about 6.3, 6.4 terahashes per second. Now I don't know exactly how far I can push this thing and I'm not gonna push it too far today. And that's because this thing does have a built-in fuse. Now, this fuse is larger than the fuses that come on like the standard fused uh, NerdQX++. It's a 10 amp fuse instead of a 8 amp fuse, which I think is what comes on the regular ones. But I don't know how far you can really push that thing. So I wanna talk to the engineers a bit and see what they've done in their tests. Because what I don't wanna do is go crazy with this thing, trying to get 10 terahashes per second. And then I blow that fuse and then this thing is bricked. And then I can't make my video. And of course, it's Thanksgiving here today. And uh, I don't want to break my beautiful, new, wonderful Tiny Chip Hub Miner on a holiday. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it at all, but I want to get a better sense for the capabilities of that fuse. Now, I will say this. When it comes to overclocking, in the latest update of the NerdQX++ firmware, they have limited your ability to push these things. And that's because even with the Rev6 models, there have been a ton that have burned up. They've bricked. There's been all kinds of problems because people push these things too hard. They're really not designed to get 10 terahashes per second. They're designed to get 4.8. You can push them to about six and a half safely. Anything more than that is pushing the thing way too hard and it risks the component longevity. If you run this thing at seven, eight terahashes, you can do it. It's not gonna last you as long. And that one or two terahashes is not worth the four or $500 that you spend on these devices. Get your six out of it and be happy. If you want more hash rate, buy another one or buy a more powerful miner. That's just the way it goes. But these things are not meant to go crazy with. So if you're seeing six, 6.3, 6.4, that's good. And that's as far as I push mine. Now, I have done some overclocking tests and I have gotten up to about 10 terahashes per second, but that's only with a, but that's only with a bunch of mods and that's for a very short period of time because I wanna feel comfortable with these things when I go to sleep at night. I don't wanna worry about these things overheating and bursting into flames while I'm tucked away in bed and so, Again, I've got bigger miners for the higher hash rate stuff. These things, I'm happy with six. But the biggest thing about this one that really impresses me is the efficiency. And I really believe that's because of the brand new chips. Now, like I mentioned in the video before, these are the only NerdQX++ that I'm aware of that use brand new chips. There's two ways to get ASIC chips for these things because you can't just go out and buy the ASIC chips. You either have to pull them out of old retired miners and refurb them or you go buy brand new miners and you harvest them out of fresh, brand new Bitmain ant miners. That's where you get BM1370s. Now, I know there are some companies that are working on providing brand new chips and they're working with the industry on that, but right now these things are very locked down. They're very difficult to make. And for obvious reasons, Bitmain doesn't want to take this chip they've developed and unleash it on the market for people to go and just start making a bunch of miners cheaply with their R&D. So, they're hard to get, and the way to do it is to pull them out of existing miners, whether those are new ones or old ones. Now, I think that's why we're seeing such amazing efficiency here. Again, most of my NerdQX++ are running at about 18 watts per terahash. One is at 17.5 right now. This one is bouncing between 14 and 15. Now, I've said this a million times, efficiency is not a very big deal when it comes to these things. If you have a mining farm and you've got 30 or 40 or 100 of these miners, efficiency is everything because your electricity costs cut into your profits. And if you're spending 20, 30, 40, $100,000 a month on electricity, every bit of efficiency counts. But when you're talking about a device that uses 90 to 100 watts, we're talking about the difference of a few cents per day. It really doesn't matter. That 15 to 18 efficiency, it really makes no difference. It's a nice value to look at as far as determining how well the chips are performing, but it's not super important. But overall, I am very, very, very impressed with this thing. More than anything, it's just the look and feel of the device. As far as these things go, they are more expensive, but that's because they use better stuff. It's the argument where, again, you could go buy a Toyota Camry and it's gonna get you to and from work. It's gonna do just fine. However, if you wanna do it in style, 
you get yourself a Porsche. And that's kind of how it is with the tiny chip hub stuff. It's unique. It's not something that everybody has. It is more pricey, but it's a higher quality thing. It's got more expensive parts. Tiny Chip Hub has a very well-written article where they talk about why this thing is the best of the best. They talk about how they harvest the chips. They talk about the board and why it's better. They also talk about my beautiful daughters are running past playing together. Uh, they talk about why they choose the capacitors that they use and all the other things that make this great. And I'm not going to go line by line. What are you crazies doing? I'm not going to go line by line and read this entire thing to you. But I will include a link below in the description if you want to know more about this phenomenal device. Also worth noting is that they have a special holiday sale going on right now where you can save 10% off this thing. And I think you actually save 20% if you buy two. Black Friday, golden week. Save a whole bunch of money. Buy one unit, save 10% off. Buy two units. Or if you buy three units, you get 30% off. That is insane. So yeah, again, my discount code only gets you 5% off. This is the much better deal. It's a great time to pick one of these things up. And all of their devices that I've tested are awesome. I've got their Gamma Turbo, which is great. I have the Zyber 8G, which I absolutely love. It's one of my absolute favorite home miners that you can possibly buy. And now, now that I've added this to the collection, I have their three coolest, in my opinion, devices mining away on my behalf, and I love them all. So that's pretty much all I got with this video. Again, I'm impressed. I knew I would be. Everything that Tiny Chip Hub makes is awesome. If you want to know more about this thing, leave me a question down in the comments. You can also check out that article to learn more. And I'll continue to post about this thing. If it hits a block or when we do some overclocking or anything else that exciting that happens with it, I will let you know here on the channel. Have a happy Thanksgiving to everybody. It is a holiday here in the United States, so I'm going to go enjoy some time with my family. But thank you for tuning in and have an absolutely wonderful day.